Welcome back to the GSL. With Tases and Artosis, the Cassian Archon, we've seen some pretty wicked games today. Yeah, we really have. This has been a great day of Codes so far. I think it might be the best day of the season so far. Yeah, I mean, we've seen... We were just, uh, you know, during our break, talking about how good that TVT was. That was really... That was, that was greatly done. Really I've been waiting well played. for a Marine Marauder user to actually set up these, these contains where you just punish with stim attacks instead of just walk around and try to win. And I, I love the fact that Alive knew that he had to stop 12 o'clock. Uh, I loved some of the air switches, but uh, that was where the only mistakes were made, was uh, the the huge, the too huge amount of Vikings against the not breaking the center when he did that. So other than that, beautiful TVT. Yeah, really good. And we've had some other great games here as well, so definitely recommend these games to your friends. Recommend these games to everybody. The world needs to know, Artosis. That they do. I'm really curious about this because Young's got really good TBT, like really good TBT, but yeah. Alive really impressed me with that last game. That's very true. Alive gets better and better, man. Yeah, he's a TSL team really makes really some, some sickos. Yeah, that's a really good team right there. Now, uh, the count is asserted for this game. So let's see if it's as awesome as the previous one. Don't forget, uh, there's going to be a certain level of exhaustion here coming from Alive, who just got out of an epic Terran versus Terran. He's got to start one up again. He's going to have to buck, buckle down here. If he wins this one, he's out. Uh, and on, you know, to the deeper part of Code S. If he loses, he's going to have to play one more game. Young won a quick and easy TVP. If he wins this one, it's going to be golden for him. All right, the game is, in fact, now loaded. I think our Korean commentators are talking for a little bit longer than normal. But it's time to check out our next Terran vs. Terran here in today's Code S with a live going up against Leon. In the upper right, our Terran player who really wowed all of us in that previous game. Let's see if he can do it again here against one of the uh, members of the Team Slayers. GSA or Live? <laughs> Alive had the face of a stone goat killer in that one. Yeah. Now here in the bottom left, our Terran player representing the Team Slayers, metric by Slayers Boxer. Slayer. Yeah. Yeah. Look at how good he is at that. He's very good. He knew he where even his know hand where, was going. Yeah, he knew exactly where the hand was going to go. Yeah, it's important. He's good. You need confidence. Stared straight. His eyes didn't wander. It wasn't like Tester. Or uh, Trickster, excuse me. New ID Trickster. No, it was not. All right, so let's see what these guys end up doing. It looks like Alive is actually going to go Command Center first, which is really cool. It's a good choice for this map because uh, Antigua Shipyard is unbelievably big. It's a huge map. I'm sure you guys have been playing it on the ladder. Any of you out there that watch this in Ladder, one of the new Ladder maps, of course. And, yep. Uh, it takes a while to get anywhere. I actually uh, got to practice on this map a little bit over the last few days. It's a, it's a fun map. I, yeah. I do enjoy how they're making big, big maps now. Well, remember, you know, remember you, Steps of War. Remember that. I knew you were going to say Steps of War. I wish you'd never say that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, tasteless. I remember Steps of War back when I was a Zerg, and it was impossible. Oh, uh, Steps of War. Nice little SCV harassment here. Doesn't look like it's going to be too effective. You know, With the harassing SCV already lower on HP than... Okay, oh! I don't know. He Sick. just got snapped. The SCV's neck got snapped, tasteless. Steven Seagal style. Where he, as he snaps guys' necks, he drops to the floor very slowly, looking into their eyes, going... He's got to keep them quiet. Yeah. You don't want them gurgling with their last breaths. Might That's get right. the other guys to shoot him. That's what I do when I snap necks. Yeah. And I, I suck the last breath of air out of their mouth so I can take their soul. <laughs> okay. That's how I do it, man. Ew. All right, so this Marine is already injured, so... Well, it gets... Oh, my God, it got nice. two SCs. That's an awesome, awesome Marine by Ryung. Wow. Peace. And, of course, that Marine was always going to die. He knew it going in, but he fought for his master. Yeah. Now, uh, the factory on the way here for Alive. 
Alive has to be feeling confident. He knows that was actually probably one of the best games of his life. Yeah, he just finished that back was, there. That was a top end game right there. There's no question. He he impressed. And his factory is actually going to be a little bit quicker. And of course, his command center is a lot quicker. So, you know, Alive is missing out on SCVs though, just a little bit. He's down at 18 against 21. Of course, he's uh, already producing SCVs two at a time, where that's going to take. Well, I guess Ryan just finished up, so he is as well. Um, but if he hadn't lost those two SCVs, I would say definitely in the lead, as is. It's pretty darn close. Three Marines against two. All right, Starport now on the way. And I, you know, there's so many different ways you can go from one of these fast command center builds. That's actually yeah. what, one of the things that makes it so scary to play against is that First of all, you know that if they get it up and you don't get an expansion up, you're behind. But then you still don't know where they're going to go from there. That's you can basically true. do anything you were going to do on one base oh. off, two, off two base. Oh, my God. Look at that guy burn. Oh, that's gross, man. Oh, that was awesome. Imagine the stink. He was like, oh. They weren't in space. They stink tasteless. Ugh. Well, Ryung, we don't know if he's going to go mech yet. It looks like he is. Oh, oh, oh. He slipped by. Oh, man. But denied. So that was pretty smart. Yeah. Blue Just try to get that in there. Blue he did see the tech lab. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, go. You have right. the conch. Go ahead. Thanks, man. Alive, once again, is going to go for some bionic. Uh, definitely going to get some sea shanks going as well. But definitely some marine marauder. And uh, Ryan, we don't really know yet. Ah, he's going mech. Good. Good, Ryan. Thank you. Good. You know, this map is so huge that uh, Alive is going to be able to take it pretty quickly, but Ryung is going to be able to take a very quick third as far as mech goes, because the third base in this map is very easily defensible with Siege Shanks. Another factor is, um, you know, this the center part of the map, if you get a good contain up there, it's actually not that different from Zelnaga Fortress. Oh my god, Ryung has a Viking behind enemy lines, but Alive has two! Two better than one, once again. One tasteless is the loneliest number. It is. Ever have. Although uh, three might be lonely if you had a two and a one. Well, then That's I guess that true. number one would be lonely. If the two were together. Yeah, man. One is the loneliest number. Yeah. Your proverb is correct. That statement that you came up with is correct. <laughs> yeah. A lot of this will be a fight for the middle, since there, are, there is high ground and you can control the gold patches, so that's what a lot of Terran vs. Terran kind of boils down to on this map. Mm -hmm. Smedvac trying to get away. It's slightly slower than It's like Viking. the slowest car chase in the world, watching a <laughs> Medivac run away from a Viking. It's like, get back here. I'm chasing you, but we both got to go under 40, because that's the law. Well... Looks like uh, Alive just setting up a nice uh, building formation as Choke. Some blue flames out there. Let's see what they can get done. Not a whole lot against Marauders, of course. Supply very similar. 3 young 87, 83, 4 Alive. Nice, here we go. One of the few days I get to see a Hellion fight a Viking. Yeah. I've it's... seen it all now. Not the most common, becoming more so. Oh. Never mind. What you and don't see won't hurt you. Oh, well that sure hurt that Hellion Tasis. True that. All right, uh, right now the supplies dead even. 194 out of 110 for both of these players. So nobody here has missed a beat. Extra command centers for Ryan, much like Top was doing before. Alive, of course, is making his command as well, but Ryung actually looks like he may have the third base first. Matters, of course, how quickly he's going to move out. He has all his units basically sitting in his main base right now. But if he sets up just right, should be able to take a very fast third base, which makes a big difference with Mech, how quickly you can take that third. If he uses all his high ground correctly, and I think he will, he can go take it in just a moment. Or he might now, just sit there and make more aliens. Yeah. That's a possibility as well. 
Very, very, very passive game from both of these guys. Yeah. yeah it's I actually mean, they've actually basically both gone over 120 food before they've even opted to really move out on the map with anything other than a scouting unit. Well, you know, Terran is the one race that truly has a huge defender's advantage. So Absolutely. It's very, very hard to attack at each other. In fact, in an optimally played TVT, you don't really attack each other. Yeah. You just cut a few corners here and there. Yeah. Pick a few fights, you know you can win. Mm-hmm. Just like our right. Now, <laughs> here's the problem is that uh, it looks like right now Alive is going to get the center first. That's not good for Leon. That's right. But, you know, that's what he gives up going Mac. You're going to give up your map control for a better, more powerful, long game unit composition. I love that, by the way, that Ryung has gotten a couple uh, Ravens already. Yeah, They're gonna that's have really good. Plenty of time. And in fact, that kind of negates the first attack that Alive pulls off because, of course, they work against Marauder shells. So he can stop Marauders from really doing anything during a battle because he's building up so much energy on you know, those very quickly. I always wonder if in TVT, if the matchup will eventually evolve into Seeker missiles being shot at contains. Uh, you know, that's that's a good question. Because you the know, problem you with it is the Viking range is just so great. Yeah. So you're going to have to cover yourself with point defense drones to get in there, and then things might get messy. But yeah, yeah no, that's it, very true. But I'm just thinking if you can get the Vikings mm -hmm. out of position or anything like that, why not shoot one or two Seeker missiles in there? They either have to give up the position or have all the yeah. Siege tanks damaged, in which case, okay. Uh oh hold that Well, there's a lot going on right here. He's got to pull those back. Uh, very wants, important to control this watchtower mm -hmm. right now. He really wants for the Alive to get in range of his Siege tanks. If he does then Ryung will easily win this battle. As is, he just kind of took a lot of damage on his Hellions, didn't do too much damage to the Marauders. Nice job here. Just gonna shoot down the Medivac. Yeah, very well done. And Siege Shank pushing up, man. And I don't think there's any way that uh, Alive is now gonna control the center of the map now. You know, this is actually a really cool way that he's playing this. This is, this is actually starting to make perfect sense to me. The, the two Ravens that he made were actually so he could do things like this. Because normally the, the Marauder Siege Tank style, you'll be able to stim and run in and kill him. But with this many point fence drones, that makes that suicide. So Ryung right now is just adding a ton of factories off three base and trying to push as quickly as he can. He might be planning to get his own contain up. In which case, uh, Alive will have an extremely hard time actually breaking out with his Marines and Marauders. You don't ever want to actually attack into sieged tanks with those. So he's actually taking the middle of the map. This is a beautiful maneuver. It's actually really smart. I see what, exactly what you're saying, Artosis. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, oh, boy, we have a drop over here. I'll get back to that in a second. Well, you had some siege tanks coming in. Those SCVs helping out as well. Marauders actually don't do that well against SCVs. And he might be able to shoot that down. Yep, oh. before it can unload. Yep. But yeah, you're absolutely right. With a point defense uh -oh. drone, he can absolutely well, negate the, the Marauder advantage because normally siege tanks can't move forward yeah, on Marauders. They just run up there and snipe them. That's normally why you don't ever move until you're maxed out after your third base. But Ryung is moving a little bit earlier than that. He's taking his fourth at the gold and he's controlling the map with point defense. The threat of point defense drone. He doesn't even have to cast it. He just says, hey, look at me. I have point defense drone. You can attack me with the Marauders and my siege tanks? No. And if you do, I'm going to own you. So it's really awesome. I'm just, I'm so thrilled right now with Ryung's play. And here's another factor as well. Uh, right now, Ryung has the gold base. And if you have the gold base in this map of TBT, it's almost impossible for the other player to get the gold base too. You don't normally have two guys with gold bases on this map in this matchup. Quite true. I, I doubt that we will ever see it. That's, imagine what a weird setup that would be, Tasis. That would be both players insane. Both players mine from the gold TBT. And like neither one of them controls the Zelnaga Watchtower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, because if one did, there'd be a siege tank at it. A lot of command centers going up for oh! players right now. Taking out two siege tanks. Ryung actually maxing out before Alive. Thanks to all this pressure and the failed drops of Alive. Still hasn't had to use these point defense drones. But still, Alive, too scared to attack in. Yeah, I mean, I think Alive might, might feel like he's almost painted himself into a corner here. You know what's funny is he's had that gold base forever and he's mining with two SCVs on gas only. Just now. Yeah, that's actually a little bit weird. 
basically using it for gas. But realistically, he's playing mech, he's already maxed out, does not need more minerals. Dropping mules is worse than scanning at this point. Much worse. And Alive is just looking for some angle that he can kind of do some damage of, of his own out here on the map, and it's, it looks like he's having a pretty hard time doing that. Yeah, he's he's kind of sitting around stuck. Uh, there's a great contain up by Ryan, and non-stop scans, which is just so good. You know, he's it's infinitely intelligent to just continually scan, and in fact, he can choose to either continue to scan all the time and know exactly where his opponent's army is, or he can start suiciding some SCVs and use mules to mine minerals, and thus get a much bigger maxed army, a true max of Terran. All right, another attack up here. Bad idea there by Alive. Look, I'm watching Live enter a boxing match against a brick wall right now. Yeah, that's basically what you're seeing. And if he ever really means it, we'll see point defense drones. Yeah. <laughs> Only attacking in little groups. He's like, well, no, I don't need this now. Uh, as you can see here, here was his attempt to get in there. Nice move there, taking out some very expensive units with these not as useful breeds from ours. But uh, not enough, I think. That Burt Marine finally died. He's been standing there all game. He's so <laughs> close to retirement as well. It's kind of a sad story. I don't want to talk about it. That's all right. I know he was close to you. Yeah. Now, once again, Ryung uh, pushing his opponent a little bit farther back here. Siege tanks exchanging blows. Well, right now, I'll give you guys some unit counts. We have 70 SCVs for Young, 74 for Alive. Uh, Alive, of course, has just taken this base, so if he can get some SCVs over there, that's great. I, I do love what um, uh, Young is doing, having this small clip of tanks here in the middle. And what he's doing is he's patrolling back and forth with the rest of his army. So every time Alive tries to get out, once again, uh, Mm -hmm. Leung is there to block it. Yeah, look at the sensor tower. Seriously, there's no moving without him knowing it. He will just contain you all game. And point look defense at that. drone. Finally using his point defense drones because there are so many Vikings out here. And it looks like, well, one Raven actually lives through that somehow, some way. But, well, there's so many scans still left over. And it's 17 C Shanks, 4 Ryungs, and 11. For Alive, but Alive does have the huge Viking lead. The only thing is, with the sensor towers as such, he sees almost all movement and can get into position against it. All right, catching this once again. And will he go to actually land on the siege tanks? That's what I was wondering. He He's does have be a lot. Careful. Yeah, there's another clump of siege tanks up north of that, so if he lands, it's almost an all in maneuver. I thought he was going to do it, though. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> All right, for the time being, once again, Liang's already maxed out. 10 supply weight for maxing out is Alive. Alive's still not able to actually get around his opponent. Mm. Everywhere he goes, Liang is one step ahead of him. Liang taking more bases as well, taking two more during all this. And in fact, not really scouting Alive's new fourth base. If he had, I feel like he could send something up there. Just a couple blue flame Hellions will do fine. And it's uh, Battle Cruiser time. Battle Cruiser time. Just like StarCraft 1 TBT. Yeah. Looks like, um, yep, the Vikings did take out that command center. Saw something on the mini map there. And, you know, uh, this is going to mean he has to way up his Viking count. And this is actually what Alive likes. He loves these huge Viking wars. So, oh my god, here we go. Looks like he wants to try to break here again. And this may actually be. Almost enough, not quite. The Thors in the background do send away a lot of the Vikings. He's got a ton of Thors here. Yeah, he does. And look at this. He's actually just going to go up here and engage. Well, at this point, he absolutely can. And Alive is actually going to fall apart here. Ryung has more than enough to break through, especially with that mass of Thors. Seven Thors marching into battle. Yeah, this is actually just a massive number of uh, you, you know, it's just but I think Leung has played this right ever since the start. And Alive never really had it much of a chance yeah, once that center was taken. Yeah, you're exactly right, Jesus. It was astoundingly good play. And Alive now plummeting to 101 supply against the 175 of Leung. Part of me 
wonders, is this just Alive being fatigued? It could or be. Or is this just Young, simply put, having way a way better grasp on the matchup well, on this map? I think it's actually a combination. Obviously, Alive is going to be feeling a lot of fatigue right now. A lot of fatigue? Yeah, man. Fatigue. <laughs> AKA fatigue if you're tasteless, or people that speak English properly. <laughs> and uh, But not just that, Ryung has shown in this game, without any doubt in my mind, that he actually understands this matchup a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty scary. Between his sensor tower and his constant unit movements, the fact that he got two Ravens for threatening point defense drones so he could actually claim the center of the map really quickly on three base. Unbelievable, TBT. Unfathomable. Yeah, no kidding. How good it is. It's like... Remember that night Bomber played two amazing TBTs? Yeah. This is there for me. This is this is actually beyond there because this is completely solid the entire time. And I mean, Alive has done a good job oh, yeah, no, in this game, but it just it was not enough. I would, I would not be surprised if Alive is the second player coming out of this group. It's so I funny mean, when we talk about uh, games like this because it looks so action-packed, but Artos and me are basically just sitting there watching the entire time as this guy makes these brilliant moves to slowly dictate the game as a win for him. You can see Alive has done a lot of counterattacks. He's trying to slow his opponent down, but it's just not going to be enough. He's going to be able to get siege tanks over uh, the production facilities, and that's basically going to be GG. Yeah, there's no slowing there him down, Tasteless. And look at that. Ryung goes right into the round of 16. Extremely yeah, really well, well done. played. He is damn good. I am impressed. This wow. guy's TBT. First time I saw him play was a TBT, and I thought, oh my god. What a great TBT. I think the first time we casted him was in Team League, right? Yeah. You can see, also, you can see the pressure on Alive right now as he has had so much he's had to perform up to right now. I mean, talk about probably two of the most intense games that we've seen so far. Oh, yeah. Uh, very long, very hard, and draining TBTs. Luckily, he gets a little break while we watch the losers match and see who gets to go to up and down. Yeah. But, uh, wow. Um, Ryung's TBT... He said this is his warm-up season, and he wants to go to the He's finals in GSL October. pretty but badass. With, with the amount of Terrans in this tournament, depending upon how many people get through, Ryung actually has the best TVT that I've seen now. It's a, it, In my opinion, it's a little bit better than MVPs, a little bit better than Bombers. Now, this is just one game on one specific map. Does he have similar moves on these other maps, TVT? We don't really know yet, but for Antigua Shipyard, I think it's going to be a long time until we see a better played TVT than that one. I absolutely agree. That was very, very impressive. Um, well, now we're going to go into Trickster against Top. Top played a beautiful TVT, And I too. think these TVT players are getting so good, man. Well, there's more Terrans right now. Yeah. In, uh, top of the ladder's done. In the top of well, yeah, so. the ladder, yeah. On the top of the green ladder, uh, much uh, Terran heavy. Um, and I think that's partially, it's not because Terran's better, but I think Terran has a lot of different options and ways they can play the game, so I think it suits a lot of different play styles, but right now, if you're going to be good um, in StarCraft 2, you better be good at Terran versus Terran, because we're running out of um, the other races right now. Yeah, yeah, it's there's not a lot left, and one more may go down the tube stasis. Trickster has his Code S life on the line right now. Yeah. Will he go to the up and downs and possibly drop out altogether? I don't know. Out of all three of the players that we've seen so far, Trickster did not seem to be in the best shape. As good as he was, well, you know, that was weird when he made the next scene. Is his all in. Yeah. yeah, but beyond the micro, I mean, his decision making, which is sometimes the most important thing, mm -hmm. was a little bit off. We'll see, though. Yeah, we certainly will. The map is Metalopolis. TVP, Trickster versus Top. Should be a lot of fun. All right, head to head, Trickster against Top. Trickster has to win this game, or he is out. Same here. Or top, only one will move on, and we're going to find out who that is here in the GSL Codex.